Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video. Yes, so you know, we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel, we already start off the video by, you know, telling you, our loyal viewers and subscribers and members of the Patreon squad, to look at your LCD, yes. And, you know, and there's a reason why we always tell you guys to look at the LCD, because you will, you know, learn some valuable res um, information about the, you know, the topic or the, you know, or the subject matter that we are about to cover, so that, you know, you can delve right into it and you know you will be able to decipher certain information from it because you know some people are visual learners and some people learn differently it's not everyone you know can you know some people grasp things differently so we make sure that um you know others are able to you know gain knowledge from whatever we are imparting to the audience so as you know, you know that the um, the former Prime Minister, goddaughter Melissa Silvera, was killed. Yeah, three bullets, and you know it was initially reported by her husband and member of the political class that it was a sudden death that she died in her sleep. Lo and behold, it was revealed that it was a murder. And to date, there's no suspect in custody. No one has been arrested and charged. The house that the murder had committed has been refurnished. You know, the scene of the crime has been refurnished. No suspect is in custody. So some people are saying that it seems like there are not only two Jamaica, it seems like there's three Jamaica. Yes. So right now, if you're looking at your LCD, you will see, yes, the photograph of a young lady by the name of Donna Lee Donaldson. And she's dead. Yeah, so we're gonna show you the you know the hypocrisy, you know, the selective outrage in Jamaica justice system by the same people who claim that they love women and they love our girls and to protect the girls and protect our ladies. And we haven't seen that outrage that, that we haven't seen when Donna Lee Donaldson, when it was alleged that her boyfriend, who's a police officer, Yes, Constable Noel Maitland, the producer, music producer and, you know, what you call it, flamboyant um, police officer who was the alleged suspect in the matter and eventually was arrested and charged with murder and he's in custody since his arrest. No bail for him. We're not advocating anything for him, but we're just going to show you the difference. So while we have a man in Jamaica, you know, um, while you have murderers in Jamaica and triple murder case, they get bail, but Constable Maitland cannot get any bail because he killed his girlfriend and he was, he, he was, or he is a police officer. So that's how it is in Jamaica. The law is harsh when it comes on to police officers, but others, uh, no, you can't get even bail for triple murder and, and people who are on Eight counts of murder can get bail, but not Constable Maitland who was arrested and charged with one bail, one murder, because he killed his girlfriend. So it's only other people's life in Jamaica have, have no, it doesn't have any value. But a policeman girlfriend have more value than one man killing three people or one man killing eight other people. So the eight other Jamaicans' life doesn't matter. So the other, the, the killer can be bailed. So you don't you see that something is wrong right there. Justice is not being 
equitably distributed in Jamaica. You understand? So you want to make an example. We are not taking up for Constable Maitland. But we are saying if everyone has been treated fairly, there will be no, no one who is arrested and charged with murder in Jamaica should be afforded any bail. But you know, the system has been very, very sympathetic and very conducive to the criminals in Jamaica. So moving on. So we'll come to our channel again. You know, so this start provoking video delves into the alarming trend of selective outrage within Jamaica's justice system. So do you remember when Donald Lee Donaldson's case entered the public domain in Jamaica? Yes. I know most of you must remember the immense social media galvanization against a suspected killer, Constable Noel Maitland, exposed a potential cover up by the police force. The public demand transparency and justice of Donnelly Donaldson. But here we stand today, January 6, 2024, questioning the absence of similar outrage for Melissa Silvera. Where's the outrage? Melissa is, the lo is a loving wife, devoted mother, and an innocent woman was tra tragically shot three times to death. In her own home the home that she share the matrimonial home that she share with her husband a farm a member of the pmp criminal organization jylan rob jylan silveria yes a former member of parliament shockingly her husband claimed her death was due to natural causes and everyone within the political Rem in Jamaica, they run with it and they publicize and they offer their condolence all the way up to even the Prime Minister. Yes, the Prime Minister would, yeah, yes, I would not blame him, the Prime Minister, for anything because he would thought that the husband is an honest and conscientious person. But little did he know that he, these are people from the criminal organization, the PMP. Yes, the PMP is not a political party, it's a criminal organization. So whenever, whenever these, whenever anyone within the Rem, or someone from within the PMP criminal organization author something make sure not only trust but verify you cannot trust them because they are criminal it's a criminal organization so I hope the Prime Minister and others who have learned from this episode know that whenever the PMP said something any member of the PMP criminal organization from the top to the bottom if they said the rain is falling don't listen to, the, don't listen to them you go outside and make sure you see it for yourself because these people, there's no honest criminal. Criminal doesn't have to be convicted of a crime as far as I'm concerned. You know. Just the person's mind, their mindset and how they operated, you know, makes them a criminal-minded person. Because if you're a conscientious person, a decent person, you'll always speak the truth. But you know, criminals, people who are criminal supporters do not like to hear the truth. So they always berate the person and label the other person as other because you're not on the bandwagon of selling lies. But we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel, we care zero about people's feelings and what they think. We're just going to tell you the real mama papa truth. So we... Um, so during the investigation, um, it is, has been revealed, you know, where, um, yes, as our channel has reported that there was a cover-up that was about to take place for this, in this murder case of Melissa Silveria. And then um, DCP Fitzbailey came out and said, oh, you know, there's no cover-up, you know, nothing uh, um, wrong has been going on. But what DCP Bailey failed to tell the Jamaican public that the Sergeant Dabney, yes, the same policeman who visited the scene of the crime and reported it as sudden death and did not perform any sign um, visible for him to do his job as a police officer to check the body for marks of violence. Why, DCP Fitzbailey having told the Jamaican public that this man, this policeman, was the bodyguard for Mr. Jo Jylan Silvera. Yes, Sergeant Dabney is the alleged farmer bodyguard of PMP criminal organization farmer MP Jarl and Silvera. Well, yeah, why, why was that information hidden from the public that this man, the man who reported it as sudden death, that he is a farmer bodyguard for, uh, um, for, uh, of Mr. Silvera? Isn't it that a conflict of interest there? Why is the police force protecting this police officer? And not seeing that it's a straight corruption right here with this matter. 
And if it wasn't for PJ purchasing this case, would not only be unsolved, this case would be um it would be out of the public domain and they would cremate this woman's body and this man would and the killer would get away with murder. But today the killer is walking free and enjoying himself. You understand her herself. You understand evil. Bobby Montecue is a witness in this matter. So let's see how the police is gonna work this investigation. Don't tell me that they have this decimated the police force, that the police force itself has become impotent. And this is what the political class wanted. An impotent police force with corruptors from the top to the bottom of the police force where they protect the political class and those who are in high society. But yet, you know, and then, you know, the little man downtown or wherever is held to a different standard. In the scheme of things, we know that if this had happened with a policeman, he would be in jail from the day that the police, uh, you understand? You understand? So under normal circumstances, her body might have been cremated if it hadn't been for her godfather, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson. So we can say, in a P.J. Patterson latter years, yeah, we can say, boy, the man is, is doing good for Jamaica because P.J. Patterson you know, is the one who prevented them from this murder, keep, uh, from the murder or getting away with, mur with killing this woman. P.J. Patterson, if it was for the independent pathologist, you understand? And then the government pathologist that, you know, that they thought that um, they could get to cover it up. And they said, no, no, you, I'm not going to prison with you. I'm not going to cover it up. But let's see how it is going to, if it was for P.J. Patterson, we would not know that um, that she was murdered, that she was killed. But it seems like the alleged killer, yes, Mr. Jailan Silvera, yeah man, who happens to be a, me a member of the PMP criminal organization, would have escaped justice. If it was for P.J. Patterson. So they expect P.J. Patterson, yeah, Mark Golden and the others, they expect P.J. Patterson to, um, they have to cuddle them and support them to killing his goddaughter. Remember, you know, P.J. Patterson at one point in time, you know, he has an affinity for her mother. And we're not going to delve deep into that. So they are, we can't say that they had, a, uh, they had a nice relationship in their younger years. But we can see that boy, the destruction of Jamaica right in front of our eyes. You understand? So we ask, where is the hunger? Where is the anger, the rage and galvanization on behalf of Melissa Silvera? Where is it? Where are all these people when that were out there when Donnelly Donaldson case was going on? Where where where's the same energy? Where's the same anger and the same rage? What isn't it? Melissa Silvera um, doesn't deserve the same anger and rage. And the, 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 um, the thing is that there's a body that's even worse. There's a body and it was three gunshots to the body of this woman. And there's no one galvanizing. What, what, happened, to, what happened to Jamaican for justice? Where is um, Mikkel Jackson? Where is Jamaican for justice? Where are these people that claim that they love, they love um, people who have been denied justice where are they where are them where are these people they seem all to be absent on this deafening silence melissa Silvera has been enduring allegedly serious abuse physical abuse from this man who beats her mercilessly even with a cheer like he's a wwe wrestler oh and god's earth a woman stay in a relationship with a man that beat a man with cheer because you just want people to say you're married. Hey, better you're single and alive, man. Oh, if you make a man beat you with cheer. Come on, woman. You have to do a bunch better. If a man, once he puts his hands on you, you forgive him and you forget and you move on. Don't let it happen the second time. That's why she is no longer here. So some people are wondering, oh, is it because of the photograph of this man with the other man? Uh, so <laughs> let's continue. The, let's, move, let's continue the journey. You understand? Yeah, so could it be could it be that some of the same individual who passionately demonstrated during Donnelly Donald's murder case only only care because the suspect was a police officer? Yes, that's the only reason why. In Jamaica, you know, police officers are the most hated people, you know. So it's easy for you to galvanize. That's why in time police kill criminals. You can't block the road of them thing there. 
and yeah and you will get the support from the media houses but look you don't hear the media houses them are come out and you don't hear them even report on, on it anymore because you have to understand the Sylvia um Jail and Sylvia is a part of the establishment yeah and we, we, we attack the cabal the real criminal them in Jamaica he, oh you think of the little man we have fire and them are the real criminal they are the ones that killing each other and causing pee into their um to their neighbors relatives because of ego because they themselves do not love love themselves so they don't love if you don't love yourself you can't love another person and that, that's what it's all about you understand so you know we we'll continue the journey so jamaica society has become a breeding ground for hypocrisy yes man where individuals claim to advocate for abuse and murder women but only when the suspect is a police officer and that is true we don't see no one out there for Melissa Silvia. Where are all the social media gurus that are? Um, yes, let's go and demonstrate um, down by Maitland's apartment in New Kingston. Why nobody not going up to um, Jailand Silvia, residence in um, Old Stone Hill Road to demonstrate against the murder of this woman? Why, why, no, why, why, why the deafening silence? What? What, what is going on? What well, isn't it? Melissa's Sylvia of um, life have no value to these people, or it's because the husband, the suspect, the main suspect is a member of the crim uh, the PMP criminal organization. And Jamaicans know that the that the people of the crim the PMP criminal organization, they have zero tolerance for anyone. Zero. Yes, zero tolerance. You understand? So we we'll continue the journey. It is disheartening to witness such selective outrage within our justice system and within the public domain. We haven't seen the same outrage as they have, you know, um, poured out when Donnelly Donaldson um, was missing, and they did not even up to date. They haven't found a body. They said that Donnelly um, bodies was cremated by a certain parlor, and we're not gonna call its name right now, but. It, the parlor know himself and that man has been is affiliated with the music fraternity so we don't know how the government or the, the, the government monitor these places so um she was cremated donnelly donaldson so the, there's no body to find just like with lizard the same thing happened to lizards so as we were unravel layers of this disturbing issue we aim to shed light on the underlying motives and unveil the hypocrisy that plagues Jamaica's justice system and society. Join us in this exploration as we navigate through the complexities of the situation and challenge societal norms. Are you ready to question the status quo and demand a fair, just and unbiased justice system for all and for the Jamaican public to show that they are unbiased too and fair? But they, 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 they are not. But anything to do with the police, yes, you know, they, they are ready. So let your voice be heard and join the conversation today. So we're going to uncover corruption in Jamaica. The Melissa Silver, Silvera's murder cover up. You know, so as we delve deeper into the alarming level of corruption in Jamaica, specifically focusing on the baffling case of Melissa Silvera's murder cover up. It's, go, it's November, you know, she was killed November 10th, and today is January 6th, so it's going two months. A murder case, you know. Remember, you know, a murder case, and the, the, the scene of the crime has been refurbished, and no one is in custody. You understand? So, some people are saying, um, is this the photo, the photo that showed Jail and Silvera did not want his wife, Melissa Silvera, to see him cozying up with this man, I know that she's dead. That's what people are wondering if it, if this is the photograph why you know the man you know what if it's this the photograph why she's dead we don't know so we, we you know you just stay tuned so join us as we analyze why many many jamaicans both on the little island and in the diaspora are left astonished by the blatant cover-up happening right before their eyes the responsible party allegedly Sergeant Dabney 
Sergeant Dabney, who served as Mr. Joylan Silvera's bodyguard, is at the center of this disturbing ordeal. Tragically, Mistress Melissa Silvera's murder was initially concealed. Yes, they hide it, thanks to the support and unfounded remarks made by Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey, the face of the criminal investigation branch in Jamaica. Such actions have caused a significant damage to the reputation of the honorable men and women serving in the Jamaican Constabulary Force. Unfolding, this intricate tale of deceit and cover-up, we owe our gratitude to former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson for stepping in and preventing the murderer from escaping justice. Had it not been for his intervention, Melissa Silvera's body would have been discreetly cremated, potentially putting an end to the case altogether. So if it wasn't for P.J. Patterson, this case would not be alive. And the police were a part of the cover-up, including Sergeant Dabney, who was the former bodyguard of Jylan Silvera. So they knew each other before then. And not only that, I would told you before that Jylan Silvera is a known cobrant because he said it in this police station of Stone Hill. People, even residents from Stone Hill, said that Jylan Silvera is a PMP criminal organization supporter. As a police officer, he said it. Even with the case with Rowan James, he said it publicly. He did not hide it. And I believe because this is how these people operated. When I was in the police force, police officers will tell you that they are PMP police in which that goes against the rules, regulation and laws of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. No police officer not supposed to be advocating or supporting any political party you're supposed to be neutral you can vote but you're not supposed to be known as a political operative in the police force and this man has made it no clear that he sergeant dabney is a pmp police i have never heard anything like that before oh you are a pmp that means you're not a police you're a criminal in uniform you're a political activist but you know what these are the police officers that the pmp criminal organization love if you are not a corrupt police officer who is willing to compromise your character, integrity and reputation to destroy it, to do anything for the PMP criminal organization, they have no use for you. They do not like honest, decent and ethical police officers. I am telling you that. If they are able to corrupt you, yes, then you are there. Just like how you had, um, a farm, you had many high-ranking police officers who were a part of the PMP criminal organization when they were in the police force. You know, remember a guy that um, named Bury um, with the street people scandal. There are so many things that we can give you about the PMP criminal organization and the people of Jamaica. Oh, we don't want to hear about the past. If you do not know your past, that means you don't know your future. You're, about, you're going to make the same mistake that you have made in the past. And that's what we don't want. We don't want the same mistakes to be repeated. So that's what we are here. Prevention. We are all about here to prevent things and to save lives. That's it. We don't care about no PMP or no GLP. All we care about is Jamaica. But we know for a fact that the PMP is not a political, it's a criminal organization pretending to be a political party. And if you're an honest, decent, ethical police officer, they have no, zero use for you. That's how it is. And you understand? And even the chain of command, they know who's who and who's, who's not who. That's how it is. So, moving on. You understand? So as we shed light on the dark on the belly of corruption within Jamaica Law Enforcement Agency, together we aim to bring, ju bring justice to Melissa Silvera and expose a systemic issue within the Jamaica Constabulary Force that foster such unscrupulous and evil behavior. Yeah man, corruption and you know covering up this murder case. So let us unveil the shocking truth behind the Melissa Silvera murder cover-up and work towards a brighter future for our beloved nation. If you are passionate about justice, corruption or Jamaica, you know and love. Don't miss this thought-provoking video by the Jamaica Young Police Channel. You know, so as we delve deeper into the alleged cover-up surrounding the murder of Melissa Silvera, and the involvement of Sergeant Dabney, who 
knew Melissa Silvera personally. Yes, they have been to the woman so many times because you remember he used to bodyguard the husband, so he knew the wife. Yes, this man knew the wife because he was his bodyguard. So this man was a PMP police because for you to work a protective service, I don't care what no man wants to say you now. And some police say, uh, you know my body. No, for you to work at pro protective service and around a politician, you have to subscribe to the polit politician political philosophy. So if you're bodyguard PMP, you're a PMP police officer. No if or but. Ask Robert Walker, who is at Marine Police Division. Yes, and he's from Kingston 13. Yes, ask him. Lickshot Walker, them call him. He used to be in Clarendon. Ask him. Lickshot Walker would not get a labor right politician. Because Lickshot Walker is not a labor right. He's a PMP police. I just say it God. So I don't know what some people... Oh, you know, me know my... Hey, that's a lie. No labor right now get a PMP. Because you volunteer your service and go around the politician. You understand? It's as simple as that. I have never volunteered my service to go around any one of them. So... You understand? Because I know that it's politicians who are responsible for what is happening in Jamaica. Then and now and today. It's not the little man. Because leaders is the one leaders are the one who chart the part that they want the country to go in. It's the same thing when Edward Siago was Prime Minister. Gunmen know that the Prime Minister did not care about them and care about their human rights. All the Prime Minister cared then was about the victims' human rights in Jamaica. He did not care about gunmen human rights because he made it very clear that um, not only by his words but his actions. Yeah man, he popped murderers neck up by Spanish town man, yeah. Met man, met man have diarrhea before the, 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 the rope go around them neck. So all you see them behave like them bad and them thing there. And that was, that's fitting. You understand? And we just need, need leadership like that. Yeah man. If it wasn't for P.J. Patterson preventing them from covering up the murder of his goddaughter, Melissa Sylvia, this case would be shot. Sudden death. Insurance money. And I just saw it go. So, if you notice, boy, this man, Sylvia, boy, people just keep um, dying around him like flies. Him son dead, now him wife. Yeah, and, you know, Jamaican police, them, they are not like American police to exhume the body and to revisit it. No, they're not going to do that. Because, you understand? Yeah, because you done that already. My two, him done, and his son. You understand? We tell you already, you know, that's where the, the elites are the real criminals in Jamaica, you know. You understand? Yeah. So, Sergeant Dabney, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, he is the former bodyguard of the notorious PMP criminal organization and former MP, Jalan Silvera, was the first and only police officer to be on the scene of, the, of this murder that they were trying to cover up and get away with. With it until PJ Patterson intervened, a private pathologist, and then everything broke out that the woman was shot and killed with three bullets to her body. Normally, in a case like that, and the husband reports about, boy, yeah, well, you know, um, we thought that she, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, she did from natural causes. What they haven't told, what they haven't told, what the police haven't told the, the, the Jamaican people, you know, and keep them updated, that they were trying to get a doctor to sign off on the death certificate to cremate the woman's body. And there's a certain certain doctor within the PMP criminal organization what's, whose signature is on the document that moved the body from the home on Old Stony Road. Yeah, we'll soon get to that. Because a whole heap of people in a criminal criminal organization and cover up this crime you understand we don't say them not like it but we don't care because we just do you for telling you the truth if you can't take the truth out of so it go you understand so shockingly sergeant Dab dabney failed to examine melissa's body for any signs of violence or marks raising serious doubts about his credibility and professionalism as a police as a policeman so this is it now uh, yeah, oh boy, I did not want to, you know, I want her to enjoy privacy. The woman dead, there's no privacy. You never see vagina before. What um, do you mean? How do you mean privacy? You never see vagina. Right, so, uh, you, you understand? Yeah, you know, I'll lift up her clothes and all of them things there. Lies. Lies. You know what you were doing because you were told. So, you were the first person that they were able to corrupt. Because if you're not corrupt, no one can corrupt you, you know. You understand? Why didn't you get the detectives involved? 
Because you guys are taught that you will get away with this murder. Yeah, but little did you know that PJ Patterson was still there, her grandfather. Because she has no she has no one, she has no siblings or anyone, you understand? She's the only child. Only child. And PJ Patterson is her godfather. So if it wasn't for PJ Patterson, this case would be over and done with. So we have seen we have seen um Miss Patterson being murdered and her daughter. You know, and they're saying that Philip Powell is getting away with it because he's the mastermind. And we're, you know, we're supposed to do a follow-up video about certain things in regards to that. So we'll keep moving on. You understand? So what's even more pers per perspective? You know, Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey emphasized the needs for transparency, urging us the people to acknowledge that there is no cover-ups or conflict of interest by those involved in the investigation. Or what the evidence suggests otherwise, because if this policeman was the bodyguard of Mr. Silvera, that showed that there's a conflict of interest there. No if or buts. A conflict of interest is right there. So, you know, that, that you know, and that's a fact. So what's even more perspective perspecting is that if Mr. Silvera is genuinely innocent and had no and in, in his wife murder. Why did he commence, commence refurnishing the scene of the crime? It just common sense, you know. We know so some people cannot think because when it comes on to their party or people them love, them all is right. Wrong is right to them and right is double right. So them all is right. And we know that most of the people who may support, the, um, support the people's criminal um, organization, them cannot think. They are like organic robots. If them smell, if them smell deity, and the hierarchy tell them it's roast beef. Them go along and say a roast beef. Ignore even them own sense of smelling. I see me because I can think I'm a critical thinker. Yeah, once you can think, them say you're a labor right. So basically, you know, they are telling their supporters, you know, yeah, you're a PMP. You're a PMP. And you're a PMP. You're a member of the PMP criminal organization. And you are cultured, nurtured, and socialized to be a liar. Once you're a liar, you're a labor right. How is that? Oh, what kind of society that is this? That we have two, we have two entities that claim that they are a political organization, but one is a criminal organization that promote lies and everything that you would say out, outside of the realm of normalcy. Truth is lies, truth is lies to them, and lies are truth. And the supporters just go along with it. Don't you see the murder? This is a murder of this woman who shot her, who shot and killed her in her house, who cleaned up the murder scene. So let's see, and it's going two months now, and the man is out there enjoying and uh, get for shop on them thing there, you understand? Innocent individual typically would not engage in such action unless they have something to hide and cover up. So if Mr. Silvio was innocent, there was there is no need for him to do refurnish you know um, where the murder where the murder committed. And all of a sudden that a murder. You understand? So this start, you know, so this part start provoking video that I set the alleged cover up involving Sergeant Dabney, the PMP uh, of the PMP criminal organization, and the murder of Melissa Silvera. So as we see the truth behind this shocking case, examine the intricate details and mounting questions. Yes, yeah, so if you have reached this far, um, listen to the video today, and you haven't subscribed to the Jamaica Young Police Center, yeah, consider subscribing. Sub, um, hit the subscription button, select all, so that when we at the Jamaica Young Police Center release a video, you'll be the first person. Yeah, so you receive a notification about the video that we had released. Yeah, so right now you're looking at, yeah, at Dr. Dayton Campbell. is the General Secretary for the PMP Criminal Organization. And it is brought to our attention that he has done certain things in this case, in this murder case, which is not made public, so we don't want to divulge that information and compromise the police investigation. But we haven't seen anything in the public in which investigation are not done in the public, but we're just saying, why haven't the police spoken to Dr. Dayton Campbell about his alleged role in this cover-up in the murder case of Melissa Silvera? That's a question that has been asked. Why? So we continue the journey. You understand? So unveiling the power of personal perception, a tragic tale of secret and self-reflection, 
we delve into the captivating story surrounding Mr. Gile and Silvera and his wife, Melissa Silvera. A revealing photo, re, you know, a revealing photo reveals a world where perception shift and conventional notions are turned upside down. Our society is a complex web where personal ideologies defa defines our reality. As we navigate this intriguing narrative, we stumble upon the undeniable truth that our mind possess immense powers. Some people don't know nothing and they let others think for them. No individual has the right to dictate how we should think. Yet, honest, honestly, many fall prey to various forms of mind control, relinquishing their ability to think independently. So a lot of, you have a lot of organic robots out there. As we tell you about the ones, them, they will inside a room and they smell DD and the PMP hierarchy will tell them, no, it's roast beef. And they just dismiss what they know, tell them and say, a roast beef. Yeah. We are tell you. So we don't want to make it that loud, lewd and, you understand what I'm saying? But just picture that. You understand? Just, just picture that. You're doing a number two, and you, you, where you smell, and the man said, no, another thing, a roast beef. And you as an idiot now, you're going to spite because they tell you that. So you don't just see that these people control your mind. You don't have, you don't have control over your mind. You know, you have relinquished, you relinquished the, the ability to think independently. So why Mr. Gile and Silvera desire to have it all, maybe it's prerogative. Yeah, man, it's, it's prerogative. We firmly believe in individual autonomy. If you are intrigued, this agnostic tale and wish to embark on a thought-provoking journey, you have every right to explore this particular path. Remember, taking pride in our life choices and actions is imperative, especially when they are brought into the limelight. As we unravel the secret, it the secrets hidden behind the lens, prepare yourself for a riveting exploration of personal perception and reflect upon its power. This tragic tale reminds us that our minds can be our greatest ally and worst enemy. Let us challenge the boundaries of societal control and pave a path towards empowering thinking. Yeah, so if you have you know if, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, remember consider subscribing, select the all button so that when we release a channel, release a video at this channel, you'll be the first person to receive a notification. Yeah man, hit the thumbs up button, hit the thumbs up button so that you know the video um, um algorithm algorithm can you know be able to reach others because you know knowledge is power. We don't believe in being selfish when it comes down to knowledge. Cause you know knowledge kept to yourself is no knowledge at all. Share the video, share the video with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, yeah, your grandfather, your mother, your father, your sister, yeah, your sister in law, your brother in law, even your side chick or your side man. Yeah. Yeah, you understand? So we, we don't know what Mr. Silvia called that man if I'm side man that or what. You understand? So we say side man, you know. I don't know, like the man who used to work for bus will lift load, you know. Side man a different meaning in a 2020, 2024, and even 2023 too. So we live in a different era, you know. Yeah, side man mean different thing now. And I like one time where you say, yeah, where is side man? And you start thinking about somebody who work for bus will lift a bag and chew up on a bus stop. And, no, I know so it go now. Side man means to say, yeah, you have side man and side chick, and the side man after the man. So right, you're looking at the people, the the, the, the um the criminal organisation, yeah. And you see, you're right that a Delilah, that you know, yeah man, Jamaica's Delilah, and all that, yeah. See, criminal organisation member them, yeah, yeah man. That's a the that's a the Jamaica's criminal organisation, pretending to be a political party. So they are the ones who are behind the cover up. Yeah, man, they, they have the murder of Miss Melissa Silvera. So if these people are willing to cover up a murder of one of them fellow comrade, wife, what they would do to you? You think these people are nice people? I don't care what you want to say. I'm just here to tell you the real mama papa truth. I just saw it. Go. You understand? So, you know, it it, it, it just show you, you know, it boggles, boggles the mind, man, how people just evil. You understand? So just remember to share, you know, to share the video. Yeah, share and tell a friend to tell a friend about the Jamaica Young Police channel. 
And if you haven't joined the Patreon, yeah, join the Patreon squad so that you know you'll be able to see a video that it's not not we cannot post it there to the channel due to YouTube rules and regulations. Yes, that's how it is. So we we'll continue we we'll continue the journey. You understand? So you know so yeah, subscribe to our channel for more captivating content that encourages self-reflection and unlock the potential of personal perception. So unveiling the you know the corruption within the police, um, the Jamaica Constabulary Force right now, you know, as we shed light on the shocking murder case of Melissa Sil Silvera, which uncovered deep-rooted corruption within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Yeah, we are telling that as Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbale results to his typical rhetoric, rhetoric of lies, it become evident that Melissa's husband, yes, Jalan Silvera, may may get away with this heinous crime right under our noses yeah man so it is alleged that he's the killer because if your wife dead in a year house three gunshot and them clean up the murder scene wipe up the blood and you still out there going two months no nah, man something wrong man the police was become impot impotent but our man like Fitzbale, who have never been he never investigated a murder case before this man has been working at fraud him, him know about i yeah, you know people that he, he has been working at fraud squad for most, of, most, if not all of his career. And we are telling you, say, uh, nobody think that, you know, uh, Fitzbill is all that clean. We are telling you that. Because we can't even name some people from Palmer's Cross and things that Fitzbill have done things with. We are telling you that. Yeah, and even, and uh, we're going to do a video to show you about a man who's untouchable in Jamaica. Yeah, man. But yet he's a violence producer too, you know. Mm, yes, and he have a license of fire. He have two license. He have more than one license of fire. But police officer can't get it. So you have to understand, you know, that Jamaica is a criminal's paradise, and we're gonna show you. You understand? So you know, so we shed light on the shocking murder case of Melissa Silvera. You understand? So you know that Fitzbailey, you know, as usual, I'm gonna tell you him lie. You understand? So our, our relentless pursuit of truth has led us to uncover a web of deceit manipulation and abuse of power within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Through extensive research and investigation, we aim to expose the grim reality and bring justice to the memory of Melissa Silvera. As we delve into the intricacies of this case, analyze the evidence and unveil the shocking truth behind the rampant corruption within the Jamaica Law Enforcement Agency, this gripping expose will make you question the foundation of justice and demand accountability from those entrusted with upholding the law. Stay with us till the end as we present irrefutable facts and compelling arguments providing you with an in-depth understanding of the disturbing circumstances surrounding Melissa's Silvera's murder. Yeah man, let's unite in our collective pursuit of truth, putting an end to the corruption that tarnished the reputation of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. So the Jamaica Constabulary Force was always corrupt, you know, but by the corruption this time it's palpable. You can't even see it. And it's not like back then when you know you just hear, but now you can't see it. You understand? You can't see it. Yeah, and it go right back to Patrick Bailey's first first Patrick Bailey murder case though. So as we continue, so our latest video unco uncovering societal issues and revealing the hidden truth that must be addressed. Together, let's make a difference and hold those responsible accountable. Yeah, so Mr. Sylvia is supposed to be accountable. But you know, boy, I told me, I told PMP, uh, big wig, you know, get away with murder for 2023 going into 2024, you know. You understand? Because, yeah, and we are telling you that we're not be willing to know guy, no guy no POE, and no guy can't buy away. No guy can pay off his spin the story. Yeah, people try and them thing there, but we so we are gonna reveal we are reveal one of them and them thing that we try for buy with for we spin a story and them thing there. So behind the curtain and masking the truth of Mrs. Mel Melissa Silvera alleged tumultuous marriage. You know, as we dive deep into the tumultuous marriage of Mrs. Melissa Silvera and her husband Jalan Silvera. Silvera. So for years, Melissa has presented a facade of picture of a picture perfect relationship and marriage. But in reality, her marriage was anything but ideal. This gripping tale exposes the alleged violence and lack of respect for her equality, equality 
rights that Melissa endure at the hands of her husband, allegedly. You understand? So through this eye-opening journey, we uncover the unshocking, the shocking truth of the severe physical abuse that Melissa's allegedly suffer from her spouse. It is disheartening to learn that she was allegedly subjected to relentless beating, including incident where Jylan even used a WWE wrestler's chair as a weapon against her. So you know one of them folding chair. The boy man used that liquor down in you know, a one from back here like a wrestler, you know. And every time when him beat her and said boy, she left him ball and she believes him and change. She didn't know say leopard never changed its spots. I just saw it go. You understand? So as we pull back the curtain on a story that needs to be heard by shedding light on these alleged events, we hope to raise awareness about domestic violence and encourage conversations surrounding the importance of equal rights and respect in relationship. Through this video, we aim to empower survivors, educate viewers about the harsh realities faced by many individuals and foster a supportive community that stands against any form of abuse. Let us unite in denouncing violence and fighting for justice, equality and compassion. Jamaican people are in a compassion, you know. Yeah. So remember to leave your thoughts, comments and support below. You know, so thanks for joining us on this critical journey. You understand? So the mysterious silence sur surrounding the alleged involvement of Dr. Dayton Campbell. Yeah, man, that I PMP General Secretary in the shocking murder case of Melissa Silvera. As the PMP Criminal Organization Secretary, Dr. Campbell, potential role in a possible cover up demands attention. With mounting public concern, the question remains why haven't the authorities spoken to Dr. Campbell about his alleged connection to this tragic event? Disturbingly, it has come to light that he may have signed medical documents about Miss Silvera untimely demise. We're not going to delve deeper into it because if we delve deeper into it, they're going to know it's coming from someone who have knowledge of the investigation. And you know, as usual, them not want to mold on them thing. If the, if the police them want to put certain things out there, they will use them surrogates and them thing if they leak it. So I'm not one of their surrogates, you know. But uh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, reason being, I am like an, I, although I farm a police, I am anti-police account to them because I say I don't like thiefing police officers. And I would expect exposed police officers who are involved in certain things. And, you understand what I'm saying? And they don't like that. You know, from meticulously examining facts to dissecting potential motives and circumstances, we aim to expose any possible improperties and ensure justice prevail. Stay informed as we pursue transparencies, seeking answers and ultimately help, help bring closure to the victim's family and community. So we just want Miss Sylvia to get some justice. So in exclusive investigative contents surrounding the Melissa Sylvia murder case, let's unveil the silence and demand accountability for, for any alleged wrongdoing. Examine Jamaica political connection, the disturbing truth about corruption and accountability as we delve deeper into the crucial question that every Jamaica whether living in Jamaica or abroad must ask themselves is the Jamaica constable force covering up this murder for Mr. Joyland Silvera or any other person who, who play an active role in this cover up and its role as, as either a force for good or a breeding ground for corruption within political connections. So they have a thing that the Jamaica Constable Force is a force for good. But we at the Jamaica Young Police say it's a force for good of breeding um, corruption within political connections. So one alarming case that raises doubt about the extent of corruption in the in 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 the in inexplicable freedom enjoyed by Mr. Selvira, despite overwhelming evidence suggesting his involvement in refurnish the a murder scene, shockingly, 
he publicly claimed that his wife's death was of natural cause. He represented documents signed by a reputed medical practitioner. <laughs> this raises serious concern about accountability within our justice system. And this song goes to show you to further our claim that the PMP is a criminal organization. Remember, all of these big wigs you know, within the PMP party, they supported what um, Mr. Silvera had released that his wife died in her sleep. Now that it has revealed that the man has committed murder, you don't hear any. You know, it's just deafening silence from Mark Golden and the others within the PMP criminal organization. And then you're going to hear, oh, we know it's true, you're a labor. Yeah, man, I just speak the truth. Say so the truth or the guilty or the so it goes. You understand? You can't stop it from speaking the truth. We're always going to speak the truth. So we're, 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 there's a lack of consequences for those who wield political influence in Jamaica. It appears that they have enjoyed an unjust and an undeserved immunity from prosecution, even in the face of serious crimes. This is not the first instance of political connected individual escape punishment. Let's not forget Constable Noel Maitland, who allegedly committed the heinous crime of murder on his girlfriend, Donna Lee Donaldson. And like Mr. Silvera, he is currently behind bars awaiting trial. So the stark contrast between these two cases raises pertinent question about the integrity of our justice system. It is high time we demand, demand answers and all those in power accountable for their actions. Join the conversation by sharing your thoughts and experience in the comment section below. Let us shed light on the disturbing truth about corruption and accountability within Jamaica's political framework. Stay tuned to our channel for more insightful discussion and eye-opening revelation. Remember that we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel, all we are here to do is to tell you the facts. We are not here to massage your ego for you to feel good or tell your lies. We are not about that. And we are not beholden to any political party, whether the Jamaica Labour Party or the PMP criminal organization. The PMP criminal organization operating as a political party is not, but it is just a criminal organization. And that's it. We just hope justice will serve and thanks to former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson for keeping this case alive. Or else, Melissa Sylvia would have been criminate, cremated last year and this case would be over and done with. And the bullet that's took, um, taken from her body would not be sent to the lab because there would be no bullet. All they would have is ashes and then they would just throw away the bullet fragment from her body after the cremation. It is sad. So we're witnessing a second murder cover-up. No, a third murder cover-up because... If you look back at Philip Paul, well, um, Philip Paul, um, baby mother, and based on what Roland Balfour is seen from behind jail, behind bars, and even the other man that was captured recently, you would know that they need, the police need to talk with Philip Paul. Well. But hey, look, everything has been scraped, yeah, clean from the internet. Let's see if the Jamaican police is going to question yeah, Philip Paul. Well. Have yourself a beautiful day. And Mr. Silvera should be in jail. Yes, he should be arrested. He has been questioned twice, but we don't think that the police is doing a fantastic job in this matter. We have seen they drop the ball before, and they drop it again, and this is going to be again. So two PMP, big wig, got away with murder in 2023. Let's see in 2024 if they're going to be held accountable. Have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.